Hello and welcome to this second tutorial about OpenGL for Android devices. In the last tutorial, we initialized an activity and we cleared it with a custom color. In this tutorial, we will be drawing a triangle. It might seem not too much, but however, this step will be involving some um, setting up uh, some code and OpenGL buffers. So before we go to the code, I will show you the main pipeline of OpenGL and how we communicate with the GPU and tell it what to draw. This will also clarify some concepts and terminology which we will be using in the code. So this slide shows the OpenGL rendering pipeline which usually run on the GPU on the right hand side here and on the left hand side it shows the Java code which we write in Android Studio. We control the rendering pipeline on OpenGL using commands from the Java. This is usually done from the Java code by defining the vertices in a buffer and sending it to the OpenGL. Let's say for example that we want to draw a triangle. We start by drawing three vertices which represent the triangle and then we send them to OpenGL. The second step in the OpenGL side is to run the vertex shader. This is a custom written program. We will show how to do it. This will be a simple program which will be compiled and run on the GPU. This program will be run for each one of these three vertices and will define some properties for these vertices like the position. After that, uh, the rasterizer will um, divide this rectangle into pixels and um, into fragments as you can see here these small squares each one of these small squares is called a fragment and then it will run another program which is called the fragment shader on each one of these fragments and this can be used to define properties for each one of these pixels which will be shown on the screen later so the the vertex shader and the fragment shader will be also sent from the Java code as we'll see later uh, using commands also. In this tutorial, we will start by defining the vertices for our triangle. Then we will create buffers and we send those vertices to the OpenGL driver. Then we will show how we will set the color of the triangle and finally the drawing step. So this is our code from the previous tutorial where we defined the main activity and we implemented a renderer. This renderer has uh, three functions. The first function is on create, which is called when this surface is created and usually used to initialize our variables. On surface change, whenever something changed with the surface, like the dimensions or the device orientation, this function will be called. We will see what will be used for later. And finally, the on draw frame this function is actually where our drawing is happening. So last time we only used it to, uh, to clear our buffer and draw this uh, red color. I added now this line of code here to ensure that our context is using the OpenGL version three. So the first step to draw our triangle is actually to define the vertices of the triangle. I will copy, I will paste the code. As you can see here, we have a float array which contains three vertices. Each vertex has three coordinates representing the X, Y, and Z coordinates of this vertex. We also need to define the two shaders, the vertex shader and the fragment shader. As you can see here, there is some code written. I will explain that yeah, for both of the shaders. So usually start um, every shader start by like a header defining the version and then you define some input here our input only one variable called position and then there is this main function this main function will be called for each vertex in the vertex shader and for each fragment now the same here in the fragment shader in our code later we will define how this position variable will be set from the buffer note that the only thing we do in this shader is actually to set a variable called gl position which will be the final position of the vertex and we set it to the position we which we will pass from the java code and we add one to it 
at the end. So this is uh, because of the coordinate used in the OpenGL is actually four by four. And in the fragment shader, we need to define the final color of uh, the fragment, of each fragment of this triangle. But, uh, here we fix the color as you can see. So basically we set the red and green component of this color to one and the blue to zero. And this is uh, represent the alpha. I will also define two other integer variables. These two integers will hold handles to the buffers and the program which are stored on the GPU. So the program actually will be containing both the vertex shader code and uh, the fragment shader. Now we need to initialize our program by basically defining two shaders and compiling them and attaching these two shaders to the program. So first, um, regarding the vertex shader, so we use the OpenGL command create shader and the type would be vertex. Then we pass the code, which we uh, defined earlier to this shader, and then we compile it. Second step is actually to define the fragment shader. Similar to the vertex shader here, we create a shader, but the type would be fragment. And then we pass the code defined before. Finally, we compile the shader. The OpenGL program will actually combine these both shaders, as we can see here. So first we, we use the OpenGL command create program. Then we attach to this program the vertex shader and then the fragment shader and then we link the program the next step is actually to call the gl command use program because you we could have uh, multiple opengl programs on your gpu and then you need to select every time the program which you want to run as we've seen in the vertex shader there is this variable called position so we have now this opengl command called gl get attribute location so we run it using the name position this will return for us a handle which we will be using later to define how the values of the position will be set and this is all what we need to set up the gl program next we need to initialize a vertex buffer and send it to the opengl for that i will create a function This function I will call it send vertex data to um, GL. And I want this function to return an array of integers. We will see this will hold some handles, which we, we may use later. I will copy the code of this function. I already wrote it and tested it. So to save you time, I will just copy it and put it here. As you can see, I'm using here a constant which define how many uh, bytes per float are used. Um, this is usually four. I will copy this constant and two other constants which I may use later. So here we can see I mean bytes per float are four. And later we will be using short at some point. And that will be contained of two bytes. And then how many floating number we'll be using per position? This will be three since we are using uh, since we are using 3D coordinates. Now let's go through the function send vertex data to OpenGL. So this function start by using this native I/O APIs from uh, Java. This is used to allocate the buffer and here we need to define the size of the buffer first and this would be actually the length of the data which we are passing here so remember if we have a triangle with uh, three vertices then we will have like nine floating numbers so this length will be nine and then how many bytes per float we are using we also need to set the order of the bytes this is like little indian or big indian here we are using the native order from the device then we get the floating buffer represented by these bytes. Then we copy our data to this buffer and we set the current position to the beginning of the buffer. And now that's all. So we created a native buffer which will contain the data of our vertices. This data is, however, is not yet been stored on the GPU. So to do that, we first um, generate a vertex array. This will act for us as a profile and will 
save all the operation which are done after it this will become handy later when we will have more than uh, vertex buffer and we need to switch between them so we don't need to repeat all the operations here we only need to switch the vertex array after that we generate a buffer this buffer will contain the data of the vertices we save the handle of this buffer in in a temporary id here and then we ask opengl to bind the vertex buffer so to use the, the profile which we already created and the buffer also and then we issue this command which will copy the data from the vertex data into the buffer which we saved uh, which we defined by this handle buffer id next step is to enable the position variable this is the variable defined in the vertex shader and then set the attribute of this position so basically we are telling open gl that um, this position variable will contain three floating numbers and it's not normalized and here we give the stride of this buffer so currently we are only using this buffer to store vertex data so the stride will be the floating numbers used to store the coordinates multiplied by how many bytes per floating number are used we will see later um, more about uh, this when we will use the buffer not only to store the x y and z position of the vertices but also the color and maybe texture coordinates and other stuff and this will be done in the coming tutorials finally this function will return the id of the vertex array and the buffer so now remember in the on surface created we already now called this function send vertex data to gl and we need to store the id of the vertex array to use it later in the function on row for drawing the triangle we only now need to ask opengl to use the program which we already created and linked and then we want to bind this vertex array remember this will switch the current used buffer and um, the defined attributes and finally we ask opengl to draw these triangles let's now run the program on the emulator which we created last time and now as you can see we have a triangle with a yellow color as defined in the vertex shader here yeah. we can of course change the color so if we added one here to the blue color then the color of our triangle would be white this is all for this video thanks and see you in the next video